Hey, PCAC BC students, Mr. Record here, and we're going to take a look at our second part, part B of example one here in topic 1014, where we're writing the Maclaurin or possibly a Taylor series, but in this case, it'll be a Maclaurin series for a function in which we're going to go ahead and use a um, a look the, the the more meticulous approach we're going to build it using derivatives and so forth and then hopefully here in the next few videos and the next few examples uh within this topic and the topic upcoming we're going to start to streamline that process and find some other approaches so our job in this example is to find the mclaurin series in summation form for this function f of x equal 1 over 1 minus x. And then we're going to find the interval of convergence as well. So at this point, we're going to go ahead and, and build this one from scratch. And um, I want you to, to be um, in tune to the fact that we're not going to be doing this much longer. We're not going to worry about building these from the very beginning uh, much more after this. So there is another approach to this, and I think that we can kind of tie in that particular approach once we solve this the long way but just kind of bear with me and let's do this the good old-fashioned way by taking lots of derivatives and the first function uh, that we have 1 over 1 minus x keep in mind can be written as 1 minus x to the negative 1. I think that's real important because that's going to make uh, the derivative process a bit easier. Now as we take each derivative notice what's going to happen. Negative 1 in the first case is going to come out in front and then the power is going to be lowered to a negative 2. But, however, we have to multiply by the negative 1 because that is the derivative of what's inside. In other words, we have to use the chain rule. And so our final result is just 1 minus x to the negative 2 power in this particular case. All right, so if we continue this process, f double prime. What's going to happen is the negative 2 is going to come out in front. We're going to multiply that by 1 minus x to the negative 3 power. And then we have that multiplied by negative 1 as well. Again, the negatives are going to cancel. And we are going to end up with this result at that point. So we're going to continue this process and keep it going. So f triple prime is going to be, well, 2 times negative 3. We'll go ahead and multiply those together. Uh, there's a part of me that's reluctant to do that, as we might not see a pattern here coming up. But I'm going to take the chance. Notice each time we're going to be multiplying by a negative, which kind of serves as a way to make every term positive, right? It looks like we had the potential to have an alternating sign, but that's certainly not going to come to fruition. I'm going to try to take one more derivative and see if we can uh, sense the pattern. Negative 24 out in front, 1 minus x to the negative fifth, all multiplied by negative 1, is going to produce a 24 quantity, 1 minus x to the negative fifth. Now, we would like to come up with an nth derivative. And the reason why we need an nth derivative is because we're asked to write this Maclaurin series in summation form. You know, if we were only writing, say, the first three or four non-zero terms, we wouldn't have to go to the nth derivative. But the nth derivative is going to set the stage to find the nth term. And it's the nth term that you throw in with the summation. And so if we look at this, we're going to notice some things. Well, hopefully we're going to notice some things. I want you to take a look at that 24 and think about what relationship it might have with that 4, that n value of 4. Okay, maybe nothing comes to mind. That's okay. How about we do the same thing with the 6 in the term above with the 3? Maybe something is starting to happen. Notice that whatever this derivative value is, if you turn that into a factorial, you will have that coefficient. And so we can start off by just saying that this is the nth factorial. And then, of course, we have 1 minus x to the, okay, now we have something that's a little bit interesting. We don't necessarily have the same 
negative power as what the derivative is that we took. No, that's for sure. Instead, it seems like we have one that's, oh, how would you say this? It's, it's larger in magnitude by one, say n plus one. However, however, <laughs> it's all going to be negative. And I think that might be an appropriate approach to uh, how we want to uh, handle that nth plus or that nth uh, uh, derivative term. All right, well, let's go ahead and start looking at what we get when we start evaluating at zero. This is a Maclaurin, so we are going to evaluate at zero. So f of zero, what do we get when we let x be zero? Well, one to the negative one power, of course, is just one, one over one. If we do that here, one minus uh, zero is one, one to the negative two, well, that seems like that's also going to be a one. And if we move to the second derivative, I think we can pretty much rest assured that the 1 minus x to the power is always going to give us a 1. So all that seems to remain would be the coefficient that's out in front, 2 and 6, and in the fourth derivative's case, 24. And by the time we get to the nth derivative, we might find out that it doesn't seem like it matters a whole lot in terms of what this 1 minus x to the negative n plus 1 was going to bring about. Like I said, it doesn't matter a whole heck of a lot because 1 minus 0 to any power is going to still be 1. And so we can say that we're going to get an n factorial there. So that should give us the building blocks to write uh, our Maclaurin series, at least in a long form, an open form. And from that form, maybe we can uh, fashion together uh, a summation form. So we'll at least get that going. So f of x, also known as 1 over 1 minus x, is equivalent to 1 times x to the 0 over 0 factorial. So there's the first term. And the next term, we'll start off with a 1 as well. But now we're going to take our value x minus 0 and raise it to the first. So that would be 1 times x. If you want to just call that x, go right ahead. We can do that. If my pen would work, I would erase that. But uh, it's being a little stubborn here. So how about that? And then the next term would be a 2. Now, at this point, we are going to start dividing by the factorial, in this case, 2 factorial. That's multiplied by x squared. And then we have a 6. Um, that will be, make sure we get this right, a 6 that would be divided by 3 factorial multiplied by x to the third power. And then we're going to go with a 24, all divided by 4 factorial, raised or multiplied by x to the fourth. And then by the time we get to this all important nth term, we're going to have an n factorial divided by, interestingly enough, n factorial multiplied by x to the nth power. So very interesting. What we've got here, and if you probably <laughs> have followed along, all of these coefficients are going to reduce to 1. And so we just have 1 plus x plus x squared plus x cubed plus x to the fourth plus all the way up to x to the n. And so we could say, and the virtue of having that equals <laughs> right here, I'm going to end with a dot, 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 so I'm accurate. But now I can say that this is the same as the summation of 1 times x to the nth power. Now, that's only going to be true if we start in with our good friend 0 and end it with, of course, infinity. So we're going to have to realize that x to the 0 is 1, and that's going to uh, take care of that first term. There you go. Now, 
that's going to serve as our summation uh, form. As far as the integral of convergence, well, here is where I would like you to start to recognize something. I would like for you to recognize this is the infinite geometric series. It's your summation of A times R to the nth power. Hopefully you remember that. Hopefully, right, a little bit back long ago uh, in our infinite geometric series uh, topic uh, at the beginning of unit 10. So A is 1 in this case, which, hey, I wouldn't uh, disagree with that. The first term is 1. But we're using the value x for r in, in this case. And remember, in order for this to converge, we know that the r has to be between negative 1 and 1. We technically said the absolute value of r is less than 1. Well, what that means is that the interval of convergence, if we solve that, is going to be any value of r, or in this case, I'll use x. Uh, in this case, uh, we'll use negative 1 less than x, uh, less than 1. And it'll end up looking a little something like that. Now, I'm not going to underline those inequalities because I know that by virtue of this being an infinite geometric series that I do not use negative 1 and 1 because uh, I know I'm going to get um, a divergent series because of that. So our final answer is basically what you see right here in the bottom left corner for this particular problem. And this is going to open the door to some of the things that we're going to talk about a little bit when we get into 10.15 about quicker ways that you can find a series form for a problem such as 1 over 1 minus x. Anyway, I hope this helps. If you like what you're seeing, be sure to subscribe, and we'll see you at the next video.